Whilst the UK economy slips into recession, the American economy is booming. Latest figures show the US growing at nearly 5%, but the UK economy seems stuck in a near perpetual stagnation. It's no comfort to see the German economy doing even worse. In the past five years, there's been a stark contrast between the US and European economies. But why is the US doing much better and the UK so badly? Is the US economic growth based on smoke and mirrors? Or are there real reasons for better economic growth that Europe could learn from? Now, there are many differences between the two economies. The US is much bigger, with a higher real GDP per capita than the UK. The US also has plenty of its own problems, like declining life expectancy. But here we're focusing on relative economic growth rates. And these are seven reasons why the UK is slipping behind the US. In 2022, the US passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which was really an industrial strategy, offering large government subsidies to firms who invest in green technology. The $370 billion worth of green subsidies was big, bold and effective. It has caused a surge in manufacturing investment as firms have raced to take on a lead in new green technologies, such as electric cars and batteries. Not only has it stimulated demand in the economy, but also it stimulated production, investment and the long-term capacity of the economy. If you dominate solar power and batteries, it's a long-term advantage for the whole economy. The UK, by contrast, has been left behind. Investment has really fallen behind past trends, hit by Brexit, weak growth, low confidence and uncertainty. Low investment has been a long-term problem, but it's definitely worsened in recent years. Now also, interestingly, in 2022, just a few months after the US stimulus, the UK tried its own growth budget. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget offered large tax cuts in the hope that this would provide a boost to the UK's anemic economic growth. Unfortunately, the extra £100 billion of borrowing caused the bond market to crash, interest rates to soar, the pound to fall, and eventually the budget had to be reversed completely. Now, the US stimulus saw a large rise in government borrowing, and the deficit is forecast to grow. But bond markets are much more relaxed about the US situation. By contrast, the UK had much less room for manoeuvre. The US bond market is the biggest in the world. There's no shortage of people wanting to buy US treasuries. And by the way, Germany's very low economic growth is because they're doing the opposite to the US, pursuing austerity and cutting government spending at the moment. But the approaches to growth was very different. The UK hope was that tax cuts would provide a boost to demand and somehow solve long-term problems. The US budget was much more interventionist, directly encouraging firms to invest in increasing productive capacity. Income tax cuts can provide a short-term boost to demand, but for long-term growth, much more is needed. The UK also suffers from highly volatile decision-making. We've swung from big tax cuts to big tax rises, and now promises of tax cuts, and it's all very uncertain. Businesses don't feel any stability when policy has changed so frequently. It hasn't helped that post-Brexit, the UK economy, heavily reliant on international trade, has been undergoing a revolution on trade rules and customs of the union, which have increased costs. It's no wonder that investment is lagging behind. Another difference between the two economies is that the UK has seen a rise in long-term sickness, which has reduced labour productivity, labour supply, and also real incomes. The US, by contrast, has seen record levels of employment. In the UK, people leaving the labour market has been a problem for firms who face shortage of workers. To understand the difference between Europe and America, a big factor has been the impact of higher gas and oil prices. Europe was particularly hard hit by the loss of cheap Russian gas. And when gas prices soared, it caused a big inflation headache for the UK and the whole of Europe. It had knock-on effects for not just gas prices, but also electricity and food prices. The UK is particularly dependent on gas for electricity. And so this inflationary shock was a really big problem for the UK because it was the worst kind of inflation. It was higher prices, 
reducing people's disposable income, not inflation from an economic boom. Because in the US case, they had, a, in a way, a similar inflation rate. But there it was caused by a different factor. US economy has been growing very quickly. So when interest rates were increased, it moderated US growth. But here in the UK, when interest rates went up on top of cost push inflation and the cost of living crisis, it really hit demand a lot more. The UK had a rise in its misery index, a higher inflation and lower growth. And by the way, this was one reason why the mini budget fiasco of 2022 was such a disaster. The trust stimulus would have further increased inflation at a time when inflation was already too high. And that's why interest rates went up. And also another fact about the uh, surge in gas prices is that it actually benefited the US fossil fuel industry because a lot of Europe's replacement for Russian gas was imported liquid natural gas from uh, America. However, now that gas and oil prices have fallen, this reason is less convincing than it used to be. Another contrast between the UK and US is the mortgage market. After the credit crunch, the US moved quite quickly towards 30-year mortgages, whereas the UK moved more towards two-year, perhaps five-year mortgages. What it means is that households in the US have been protected from rising interest rates, whereas the UK has seen a very sharp jump in mortgage rates, and this year more people will be coming into remortgaging at high rates. Even a government minister earning £120,000 a year said he was struggling to pay his mortgage and had to retire as a minister to get a second job. And in the UK, this rise in interest rates has caused real financial distress, more so perhaps in the United States. Another contrast between the US and European economies is the growth of the working age population. In the past 20 years, US real GDP growth has been much higher than Europe. But actually, a significant part of this has been higher population growth higher immigration. If you look at per capita growth, it's more similar. However, this doesn't explain the difference between the UK and US in recent years, because the UK has also seen quite high levels of immigration and strong population growth. And if we look at real GDP per capita in the UK, the situation looks even more dire. For many months, US consumer confidence was pretty poor. Even when inflation came down, it did little to boost confidence as workers were still adjusting to the effects of much higher price level and a squeeze on living standards. It's a similar story in the UK where inflation has often exceeded nominal wages for a significant share of recent months. However, the higher economic growth in America has finally started to cause real wages in America to rise, which is helping to provide a boost to spending. However, at this point, it's worth asking, are things actually as rosy as they look in America? One difference between the UK and the US is the savings ratio. In the US, households have run down their savings to near record post-war lows. US consumers have been willing to keep spending and borrowing. There's been a sharp rise in US consumer credit and delinquency rates on consumer credit has doubled to 3%. The UK savings ratio has fallen as people have struggled to keep up with the cost of living, but it's still higher than America reflecting perhaps a greater pessimism over the future of the economy. But it does raise the question of how much of this economic growth in America can be maintained without further rises in real wages. Another big difference between the two economies is that the UK has seen a significant rise in taxes as a share of GDP. This partly reflects the very low economic growth. It puts pressure on the government to increase taxes. But combined with the rise in demand for social spending and ageing population has caused taxes in the UK to rise. The US, by contrast, has not seen the same kind of tax rises. Despite all the political wranglings about the debt ceiling, the US is running very expansionary fiscal policy, which is quite unusual at this stage of the economic cycle. You're supposed to reduce borrowing in high growth, not the other way around. The UK, by contrast, is caught between meeting fiscal targets and the need to increase spending on pensions and an ageing population. So the big question really is, can the US economy still be running hot come the November election of 2024? It will be a pivotal election and the state of the economy will have a huge bearing on the output. Can US economic growth be maintained? Can low inflation continue to fall? Or by then will the economy run out of steam? Do check out this video on my new Global Economics channel, which looks at this very question.